Welcome to Beth's Happy Home. I have been experimenting for the last week and I have figured out what you need to do in order to bake something to perfection using a Dutch oven on your stovetop. So to start, for the, time, the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and start preheating my Dutch oven. So pay attention to this. Even this is a little different than what you might expect. I'm going to turn the burner on underneath this Dutch oven um, to uh, medium high and then I'm going to take the lid off and put it on a different burner and turn it on medium high as well. And by the time I have finished mixing up this recipe, this shirt will be ready. Now in this Dutch oven, I have, um, this is just a regular Dutch oven that has legs on it, you can see. And I need to put it on the full burner. And then I have these little wads of tin foil, aluminum foil, that I'm putting in a triangle in the bottom of it just to keep the bottom of my baking pan off the bottom of the, of the Dutch oven. Because the problem with Dutch oven baking on the stovetop is that you get um, all the heat from the bottom. And even even though I'm going to heat the lid, that will help a little bit. That will help keep it from being a little bit soggy on the top, but it isn't enough to brown it and you're getting the most intense heat on the bottom. So another thing I'm going to do to protect against that, I'm going to crumple up this foil and then I'm going to uncrumple it. And that way it's going to be an uneven surface that is going to be able to trap some air in between the um, pan, the surface of my little square pan, and the um, batter that I'm baking. Now, this pan is ideal because it doesn't have any big lips around here, and that means that it will go right down into the Dutch oven really easily. And so, um, when you're shopping for a, a pan, make sure that the diagonal measurement um, that you're going to be putting in your Dutch oven is not greater than the interior of your Dutch oven itself. This is a 12 inch Dutch oven um, and, and this is an 8 inch, eight, 8 inch pan. So I'm going to put the oil side or the shiny side down. I've heard that that reflects the heat. I, I, it has never quite made sense to me. But you don't smooth it out too much. You kind of want that crinkle effect. And shiny side down. And then we'll tuck it into the tuck it into the pan. And then spray the inside of that. So that's ready to go. Now, as far as which recipes are going to be suitable for doing this, um, you're going to want to take any recipe for a quick bread that calls for a 9 by 13 pan and cut it in half. And um, if it calls for an 8 inch pan in the first place, then you're probably going to be okay just making the recipe normally. But um, it, look, it seems to me that when I've adjusted the recipes um, for the... Um, just by cutting them in half, that that is just about right. This is a, um, a whole wheat pumpkin nut bread that I'm making. It has uh, all kinds of healthful things in it, and it's, it is absolutely delicious. I will put the recipe uh, for, the bat, for this particular pumpkin cake on my um, blog at chocolatecreamcenters.com. But I just wanted to show you what the texture of the batter is. So it's pretty thick. I'll explain to you why you can't use your oven um, in a, when you have no electricity. If it is newer than 1990, it does not have a pilot light. It, it is lit by an igniter. And the only way that the gas is released is when the igniter turns on, gets very hot, and then that heat releases the valve that opens the gas and then you get the gas flowing and is lit by the hot igniter. Um, but you can't bypass that. And so while your stovetop works the opposite way where it releases the gas and then the igniter lights it, your oven um, won't release it until the igniter is already ready to go. And so you can't use your oven, but you can use your stovetop. 
So if it is older than 1990, you can probably because it probably has a pilot light. To show you how to check and see if your Dutch oven is hot enough to put your bake your batter in. You take a little bit of water. This is starting to smoke a little bit. And drop it on there. Yeah, that's good and hot. That's good and hot. The water disappears right away, so you know it's ready. I'm just going to drop this right down on these foil things. And this is smoking more because right after I baked my last thing on the stovetop, I re-seasoned my um, Dutch oven. And so it's going to be a little bit smoky this time, but the next time I do it, it won't be. Now, um, that's only going to take 15 minutes to bake in that Dutch oven. So I'm going to turn this fire down to about a medium low. And I'm going to turn off this one, of course, and set my timer for 15 minutes. Or if you don't have any electricity, you'll have to use your watch. Heaven forbid. Um, but um, I'll bring you back when that's done and then show you how well it turned out. All right, the timer has sounded. It's been 15 minutes since that went into the Dutch oven, so let's see how it's doing. It should be done. I'll, I think I'll start by turning off the heat. Do that. Came out completely clean, so it's done. That's what it looks like. We'll let that sit for just a minute, and then we will... Um, I think I'll pull it out of the pan just to stop it from cooking on the bottom. And cool off just a bit and then I'll show you what it looks like. Alright, this is cool enough to handle now, so I think I will turn it out onto the plate so that you can see how it is on the bottom. Just a, I will go ahead and show you all of the other things that I have baked in the Dutch oven and tell you the, um, how I adjusted the recipe each time. So you can see there's a little bit of a dark spot here, but otherwise it's not burned and it's very thoroughly baked. So um, we'll flip it, give it a cut. All of the recipes that I've been making for this uh, Dutch oven baking series or or video um, are also suitable for the mind diet. There are there's whole grain. This has the addition of the flaxseed. There are nuts, um, and there are berries added in one of the recipes. And so you've got a lot of the things that are recommended on the mind diet. This one also uses olive oil, as do the others that I've used. And so these make all of these that will follow, and the recipes will be on the blog at www.chocolatecreamcenters.com Smells a little smoky which isn't too surprising um, and it looks like it's a little bit moist in the middle but the middle is nice and springy so I think it's going to be just fine. We'll see you in a minute. That's what it looks like. You can see this time there is a little bit of browning on the top. I think I may have gotten the top a little bit hotter than I have in the past. But let's check and see how it looks underneath. And the crumb looks really nice. It looks like it baked at a, approximately the temperature of 350 degrees. So I would call that a success. That would go very well with a nice dinner with soup and Maybe some salad, whatever you have on hand.
So let's see. This is a banana nut recipe. It's got just enough of a, the crust on the bottom to be crisp a little bit like you like your banana bread to be. Perfect. And use a hot pad to lift this lid and set the timer for 12 minutes. I think it'll take about 12 minutes for them to bake. All right, time's up. Let's see how it did. The fire is still on. They might be a little bit doughy inside. I think maybe we'll give them one more minute. All right, now we've got them. We've had them a total of 12 minutes, so let's see. Well, they're kind of burning on the bottom, so I'm gonna definitely take them off. Maybe I'll dump them out too. This one looks like it's rather perfect. Yeah, the crumb is really nice. So it's just almost exactly the same as the cook time in the regular oven. It's just that you have to make a smaller batch that isn't very deep in order to have it bake all the way through before the bottom gets overdone. So. I hope that this is useful and if you have any questions feel free to ask because I've done uh, uh, you know hours of worth of video and I'm trimming it down to this. So um, thanks for watching Beth's Happy Home and I feel free to subscribe. There's lots of great things coming up.